We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Uh, it's 507, 508 now. Um, Randy Iser said that he was going to be away. Uh, so I think we have everyone else. Um, so what we were just discussing was that this is the first of our, I don't know what we've had, maybe eight or 10 meetings. This is the first one we've been blessed with a visitor. Um, hey, Tony Fine is here. And so we were just uh, having, we were just discussing how to, well, uh, we don't have a protocol. So we'll just play it by ear. I don't think Tony's going to be disruptive. So he might just weigh in. Or if you would like to share your points and then head off, that's fine too. We can we can start with you. Or say that I I, I wouldn't mind doing that. Sure. And it even um, be um, so should I just jump in? It's only going to take well, like two minutes, two or three minutes. Yeah. Let's see what your what's your agenda, Kyle. I'm sorry. It's not, I'm not finding it, so I just need to pull it up. Okay. Um, I, mean, I think it was fairly simple. It's pretty I, straightforward, so if you yeah. want to entertain it, I'll I, call it. Yeah, I, I think it was basically discussion. So before we delve into that, why don't we invite Tony's comments? And these are your same kind of like constructive comments about the survey? About the survey, yes. Okay. About the structure of the survey. Okay. Thanks for working working through that. Mm -hmm. I, have been, I have watched... Um, and kind of following the process, or, uh, and I did take the survey um, as it was kind of wrapping up uh, in, the, in the in the final. And I had I did have some concerns about the survey, and um, maybe well, you, can, you, can, you can kind of address going forward or at some point. My main concern about the survey and and kind of watching the meetings is that the uh, the structure of the structure and um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Who's got who has to silence their mic? Are you that's good? I think we're good. Are you good? Okay. Go ahead. The uh and um following the meetings, I soon came to realize that this is an important proposal and it's a wide range of proposal. And um as I took the survey, I'm not sure if the survey meets the meets the moment for, for, for what this um, this is my main, my main concern is that the the survey basically allows multiple votes. I know it's, I know it's I'm familiar with survey monkey and the way that it's set up, and it does will prevent you from you know repeating, just sitting there repeating. But it also will let you vote as many times as you like if you, if you have different devices. And I, at a rough count, I have probably ten devices I could vote with, um, and it also will let you refresh. It. Delete your cache and and and, um, and continue voting. And the third part was that well, th this this particular survey is set up. It asks you to have your resident, but then it um, that's kind of an honor system thing. So you can vote from there. And um, so that to me was kind of they said well, that's uh, that's interesting because this is um, this is the type of an issue where there are multiple multiple parties with. A pretty big financial interest in, in in how this turns out. Um, we hope everybody's participates honestly, but there's an incentive for, for people to to have this go one way or another, including a financial incentive for some uh, uh, developers. Mm -hmm. um, that to me was a a kind of a point that that caused the problem for me a little bit. So the um thing that that struck me was that the the preamble, I think you called it at the last, was um, there was a lot in the preamble. It was about 500, 500 words. And it was, um, it, it seemed like there was some bias in the preamble where it was trying to steer a certain way. There was one point, I don't have a front of me where it, it even said, well, there might be some concern. Paraphrasing here. There might be concerns with businesses, but it all, there, are, there are also benefits for businesses. And that's the kind of thing that I don't think should be in a preamble because you're basically making an argument in, in the preamble. And the surveys should almost be like um, 
you know, question, ballot questions where you present it and they try to keep the, the details out of it. So um, that was another point that, that caught my interest a little bit. There, uh, the next thing that I noticed was that there were some, um, some of the, some of the questions as I was taking it, you, you had some pictures and different things you could choose, but it, um, you had to choose one of them. And, you know, and to move on to the next step, you kind of had to pick one. And instead of none of the above, instead of none of the above, you kind of pick what you 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 have to pick. There were some, I think, on several there were the comments you could make at the bottom, but you kind of had to pick one. So it, it's um, it, it was kind of it didn't leave that option saying, well, I don't really like this idea. I've kind of um, have some issues with it. And um, the uh, the other thing that was a little bit um, problematic for me was that the the photos were, were very good, the photos that were in there. And photos are, um, you know, they're, they, they strike a, a report of people and you say, I like that photo, I like that. But in, in this case, we really don't know what the actual design or project will look like. So um, if, you, if you're choosing a photo and saying, I like that photo, I think I can picture that, it may not be actually what, what comes down to it. So as I was taking this, I said, I'm going to go down there and just say my piece because this is, it is a um, a pretty important proposal. And I, I was at the climate change meeting where you spoke, uh, Mr. Belling, and um, you know I think you got that point across where you said this was um, this is starting on Route Nine, but it could be um, it, it could be further reaching than that. Even Shattuck Road, you said, or if some difficulty, they don't call on 16. So. Um, I, I just grabbed that out of the top okay. of my head as like a far reaching. I don't think a developer is going to do that, but yeah. Okay. The, the, yeah. The, uh, so, um, what I'd like to see is that just kind of a rethinking this, or, or if you do have another survey, if you're going forward with this survey, just kind of put the, uh, keep those things in mind because if you, I think when you do present this um, to, to the town, you got to be able to say with some confidence that we have. Uh, last it was around 300 or something you said we have 300 voting individuals not just right is right was that correct kind of all right i haven't been able to determine exactly right uh, so uh, we, we can yeah. say there's, like, there's at least 100 unique the last question yeah. true so okay. at least a third of them are unique but that just means that's how many people entered into the email question yeah, right. True. right so th that that's the thing that it, being asked of what I, I want to say, um, these are individuals. This was, these were happy people. I don't think this is just my own opinion. I don't think people will mind registering, you know, putting their email saying, because this is not a, you know, it's it's it's, it's a public policy issue rather than personal. One. I so um, that's what I'd like to see. So so we can have confidence. Thoughts. Because uh, this is kind of this is going to be used for the next step. This survey, as I understand it, this is going to be used for that. So um, those are my points. Just keep in mind, you. No, um, no, I appreciate that. It makes me feel a little naive that my first time. There could be nefarious actors out there that would, you know, we were just thinking how to get as many people to respond. We did, as you said, use the honor policy, but we did not make it cheat safe. Um, and so with that in mind, we preface any reference to the numbers that the numbers you know are not different. I don't know what we say they're not uh, you're skewed proven you know we haven't gone out and it's not like the you know Voting when you get it, you get one slip and it, it gets processed and you're done, you know, and, and you're checked off the list. We didn't have that kind of uh, 
resources to do that fancy of a process. And we wanted to get more than just paper. And we were afraid that if we asked people for, for the name that we would get less input. Um, so, yeah. So it, it's, so it's, you could say it's, it is potentially flawed. That and just, I, I, uh, I, I appreciate uh, being able to speak my own mm -hmm. out be that the regardless of how you go be uh, um transparency is the transparency solved a lot of problems you say this is what this is what we had this is what the way we looked at it and and that and then people can keep that in mind to say um make their decisions if it helps to i mean for anybody at home maybe watching the recording later uh the strategy here is not single path, single mind. It's it's intended to be multiple. So this is going to in we started calling it focus group. It's going to be more of a sort of open forum and the intent is there that, that people can gather and have open conversations about what we learned from the survey. And then the final well, that is a third engagement. But then the final step is tempo. So no, nothing about this survey is binding and, and it's not intended to make any decisions. It's really a starting point for all of us to start to talk about what the town is concerned with and I think that's where the bulk of the benefit from the survey comes from. Not discounting the chance that some of these responses might not be from residents, it's possible. But at, at the very least, we can start to glean, you know, the temperature of the town. And from that, when we move into the in-person events, that'll help to inform the questions we raise, the topics we cover, the people we bring in to speak to those topics. Right. And thank you for reminding me that I was spacing that when I was thinking there was another survey. We actually had a few discussions about um, the in-person groups, and um, I, I would almost say that I ran with that, and I think Kyle's eyes are like, oh, this is a lot of groups. You know, we were like, you know, how do we capture as much input? And that is in-person, so you can't really, um, you know, be tricky there. You're either a citizen or you're not, um, but yeah, and that was when we also decided that I think the original expectation was that we would have something for the spring term meeting. We're like, you know, no, 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 this is a much bigger thing. We need input, it's going to take more input. And if there is a, a direction, a clear direction given, then it's going to take time to put together an actual. Um, zoning amendment so that's why we said if if this comes to town voting it wouldn't be before next fall so there's at least a year away there's we're i hope no one thinks that that there's a single minded focus and an attempt to rush things through we're like uh, i think we also realize this is a big um yeah this is a so many would say this is something that's been begging to be looked at for a long time. And if we have a full-time uh, planner, I think this would have been looked at long ago. But we're uh, a board of five volunteers, and so we are reactive to, to the issues that are brought in front of us, other than what we get a budget for to hire higher value. To help us with things like, like for example, right now the, the accessory uh, dwelling unit is something that the state is pushing down our throats. And so, if we don't amend our mind, then we have no control of you know how that comes, comes down. So, these are I appreciate your coming down. She's sharing that because that is a well, oh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Uh, hearing you, I won't take it any more of your time. I'll just go and watch the rest of the, uh, the TV at some point. Okay, thank you for coming out. Yeah, so, it's great to see people getting involved. Yeah, thanks, thanks Tony. Cool. Okay, um, or proceed. With yeah, you. if we're gonna, um, I would, uh, I would also, you know, with that. I would want for anyone else that's either tonight or in in the future 
Um, I would want to, if there's anything else that we can uh, clarify or debunk, um, there were uh, a number of written responses that I saw that um, there's clearly uh, um, a group of people that feel that our intent is to uh, bring illegal aliens into Hadley, and that's what this is really meant to be. And there were a number who just outright said, is this really, you know, to be honest, so there's, you know, so that's, that's obviously a fear out there on some people's part. I think there might have been one or two comments about, mm, I can't remember how they, they were worded, but but they did seem to, in, in my mind, they reminded me of when the Econolodge project first came up and one of the select board members called for private um, Facebook said, we don't want that. We don't want to bring crime and crap into here. So there was a correlation that if you have less income, you are crime and crap. And that is not an assumption that I am working with. Um, uh, I, when I think of affordable housing, I'm thinking of the single mom working two or three jobs and, you know, and still can't, you know, get all the things that she needs. And if, she, if there was affordable housing, she might only have to work one job and be more present for her kids. You know, that's the kind of thing I'm targeting, but I understand that there are fears and that's, you know, these are things that will not be just swept under the rug. We want people to feel heard. Right. Um, and if we can hopefully put most of their fears at ease, great. If not, we'll do the best we can. Um, I'd like to, or we will be enlightened. I'd like to add to that if you don't mind. Sure. Um, because I, I read some of those comments too, and, and some I think were probably just misguided, and others felt really malicious. Um, but I, I want to clarify a few things for, for us and for members of the public watching. When, when we talk about illegal aliens or undocumented immigrants, we're talking about people who you know are overstay their visas or maybe you know cross the border. That's an easy concept, but I don't want to confuse that with the migrant population or the population of people that have uh, been seeking asylum, people who are here legally documented, that is a very different class of people. And I think rhetoric, like what we've seen in some of these comments, puts a lot of those people in those communities at risk and at danger, as we've seen with the recent presidential debate and some of the violence that has come out of some of those, those comments and that rhetoric. So we need to be really careful how we talk about these people, these issues, these populations, and recognize that what we hear on the news or we hear on social media is not necessarily indicative of the reality of our lives today. And so to just clarify this, what I wanted to do is I pulled some data. I encourage people to go fact check me if I'm wrong. I'd, I'd be happily proven wrong. This data and data from the, uh, what was it? The Migration Policy Institute. Here's what I came up with. Massachusetts has an estimated 1,000 undocumented immigrants as part of the population. The population of Massachusetts is about 7,029,000. You take those numbers, that represents about 0.076% of the population of Massachusetts are undocumented immigrants, potentially according to these estimates. Hadley's population is the last census was 5,325 people at percentage. That's four people. Four people. So if we're worried about housing undocumented immigrants as a percentage based on the estimated percentage of, of undocumented populations in the state, we're talking about four people. Okay, well, I think this problem goes much, much, much further than who specifically gets served by housing. The housing shortage hurts everywhere. And I don't think we want to wrap this entire conversation big up in you know, migration policy or immigration yeah. policy. That's, that's not the purview of this committee. So to the extent that we can 
understand and acknowledge those comments. I would also like this committee to condemn them and that you know we as a committee cannot make policy recommendations based on equal rhetoric. And I don't want to entertain comments like that, but I do want to address them. And I think that that's important. Well, I think one of the other triggers may be you know, that it's been in the news that the uh, night's in, um, the state is using that to house, I think it's Haitian um, uh, families that came in. Is that because of persecution? Yeah, because of all the gangs down in Haiti. Um, and I don't profess to have gone over there or to have met any of them. Uh, although I, I can say I've met at least two because I have an elderly neighbor who has a has somehow met the Haitian family and they are doing dog sitting and dog care for her. So uh, I would speak to their honor. You know, they're fine. You know, I don't know if she's paying them, but I don't think they're stealing jobs or causing crime. But you guys, yeah. Regardless, they're here legal. I, I think that I, I just want us to all acknowledge that whether they are permanent residents or not, they are here legally. Yeah. And the conversation around what we build housing for cannot be focused on topics like this, which have so much misinformation circulating among us. I also wanted to address one other thing, which I saw in a number of the comments that it seemed, and I could be reading this wrong, but it seemed like some of the people felt like what we were working on was going to spend town money. What we're working towards is presenting a possible zoning change to the town, which in essence costs us nothing. It's guidance for how development building would happen. It's not anything we're going to build. Um, there were also comments about the state highway. That's not costing us money other than giving us the opportunity to um, replace uh, utility structure at a cheaper rate than if we did it on loan. You know, someone's tearing up the road, you have an opportunity. We're jumping in to do something that we wanted to do but couldn't afford to do. So again, that's not costing us money. Um, other than your state tax dollars, but I'd rather have it spent in Hadley than some other town. So um, that's, well, and I just don't want people to think that this is, because I, I thought I, I did read some of the comments that um, people had the impression that we were uh, spending town money and and the money we are spending to pay people here was a grant. So again, that's not spending town money. So uh, I would just, I'm sorry if I got a little defensive about that. I We're not spending money, but we are trying to see what we think might represent the greatest desire in town. And then it gets brought to the town. And if people don't want it, they'll vote it down. So, um, I don't want anyone to, to think that we're pushing anything down anyone's throat or that we have an agenda. Um, so, yes, Deborah. Yeah, I have a question about this process, actually. Um, <clears throat> which is, there seems to be maybe a somewhat parallel conversation happening with the planning board and the, a private developer who wants to develop the senior that's actually, house. Right. That, yeah, that's actually a separate. That is um, someone is trying to push quickly through. Right. Um, see if we will support that. And I think that we will. And even if we did, it would have to go through town meeting. But yeah, those are two, two are separate you? things. I guess I just want to clarify that the que at least the question in my mind, which is, we 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 anticipate a fairly drawn out participatory process to to come to shape um, recommendations, say for zoning bylaw change, to allow for 
larger developments, more, you know, more dense or clustered developments. A private developer like Barry Roberts comes into town and his lawyer says, well, we want to have a zoning change. And it seems like it could move much more quickly than the process we anticipate. And I guess I would like, to, I would like to understand and I would like anyone, you know, people who are tuning into this process to understand how those two processes connect or don't connect. And, um, you know, well, they, it, yeah. because the lawyer, the lawyer for Barry Roberts seemed to indicate, and this is just from the news reports that I've heard, because I haven't heard anything from the, you know, planning board directly or anything, um, you know, that they, they want to present a, a bylaw recommendation for the spring town meeting before spring town meeting. I think that was the understanding that was conveyed. So I'd like, I'd like to understand that better. Yeah. And then this might not be the time to get into that in depth, but I will say that, um, Barry Roberts had a similar but different. Um, he had a client that was offering him a piece of land off of Middle Street a couple of years back, uh, and it would have required. And it was a it was a farmer's field that he could have turned into uh, fifty five and over housing, which would allow it to be denser. And I think he was going to have something like twenty seven units on this um, dead end street that would come out onto middle street but it was on the north side of the rail trail uh, and so that was requiring a rezoning of that it was almost like spot zoning that lot uh, and that was um, that was defeated at at town meeting so they were they did bring that now he has a, a, a client the the bad family up at the corner of uh, uh, Amity, uh, Rocky Hill, and Maple that have been looking. They had an outside de developer, maybe from the Midwest, I can't remember, came in with over 200 units that they, and, and they presented it to us, uh, to, to the planning board, not us here. Um, as just to get our feel, and uh, we were not overly receptive. It seemed to have a lot of flaws, and we tried to tell them that. Um, and so it seems like maybe the Babs changed course and went with with Barry, and it is a scaled down version, but it's still. Um, it's asking for a zoning change that would really just uh, help primarily that family. So that's completely separate from this. The only overlap would be that that was 55 and plus uh, housing, uh, which the concept of that is intended to make it affordable with the density. Um, I'm not making an opinion either way, but I've heard people say that they love the uh, East Commons 55 and over housing, but it's not affordable to the greater public. It's still more expensive than what they thought would be affordable. So um, that's a separate issue completely. Those are, um, those are, projects trying to rush through and so we're trying to say well if we as a town wanted to allow this where would we allow it and what would we want it to look like and that's Tony had a very good point that there are pictures but we didn't know how better to help the public to understand that this is not exactly what you're going to get and actually I think some of them might even look like they were from Southern California with tile roofs or something. Um, but they gave you a sense of scale and and arrangement. You know, is it is it a courtyard style? Is it a you know, is it just a big 
block with double unloaded apartments or something. You know, it, it gave you um, our voters a crash course in planning. What scale do you want? And that's that's all that those were intended. So I, uh, I'm just going to add one more thing before I hand over the mic. If anyone thinks I'm raising my hand, it's really that I'm I'm supposed to elevate it so the pain doesn't shoot down my arm because I had a procedure this afternoon. So my heart, my hand's going to be up all. <laughs> we'll call on each other. Okay, good. Um, if, if I could, though, Mark, I don't want to, we're already 40 minutes into this meeting. Yeah. I don't want to take too much time, but um, Deb, you bring up a, a good question, and Mark gave a textbook perfect answer. One thing I'll say is if we ever fall below our affordable housing threshold, or if the state ever changes the threshold cap, we could find ourselves in a position where we would have to accept a 40B application, which could, by right, allow those types of developments without our wanting them. You know, we can sort of guide them towards a solution that we like as a town, but we would not be able to outright reject them. Mm -hmm. So, the, and, and I don't, I don't know that this is coming, but I would not be surprised if state looked at raising that cap as a next step towards housing affordability. Because it's really, I think the 10% number is just not working for a lot of communities. Yeah. And so we could find ourselves in that position, you know. Because we're, I think, between 12 and 13% currently. Yeah. Right. Which just so is, because he would want it to be said, one of my colleagues on the on the planning board is always quick to remind everyone that we have neighboring communities that are between 0 and 5%. And yet we're up at 12 and 13. Why do we need to do any more? But you just made a good point. I mean, those neighboring communities might not be so desirable because they're not on, on on transit or whatever. We have a lot of those amenities. So yeah, if they do raise the percentage, that's another good point. Um, Andrew, you anything you'd like to throw in before we move on? No, my apologies for uh, having to sign off. Uh, I'm kind of stuck at work, and now I have you have my full attention right now. Well, th th well, thank you for finding a way to be here. All right, shall we get to the original agenda? Yeah, um, sure. I can take it away. Um, in terms of the original agenda, we had on here to to review some of the re summary report. Um, of the survey, you know, we've talked a little bit about the open-ended responses, um, at least a, a small sampling of those that were offered. Um, and I'd like to show you uh, today the start of a summary report that I'm preparing um, that tries to consolidate some of the trends that we find in those open-ended reports or responses. Um, Justin followed up with his quick takes via email today, and I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate everybody's comments and thoughts regarding some of the sentiments portrayed. Um, and of course, in drafting this summary, I would yield to the committee's preference in terms of language and how you'd like to structure it. Um, so first go back to my zoom and share where did I share this one okay so bear with me everybody okay we'll try to you know, hide some things and while you're doing that I'll just add to the earlier discussion in my mind there are uh, as we mentioned a number of um, Hadley residents that uh, it appears their minds are made up that they see no need or desire for changing or making affordable housing more uh, more possible and uh, but there is a considerable number of residents whose minds are not made up. There's there's a number who are pro, 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 and there's a number who are like, oh, I don't know. What's it going to look like? So my goal would be 
for us to find the best option that we think the town would like and make it presentable and discussable long before the town votes so that there can be criticisms and questions and defense and, and it can be a healthy discussion before everyone votes and I wouldn't want to come out with something and then have uninformed vote on it because as Tony made the point it was a uh, it has potential for long-term consequences but it does and one of the things we we heard a lot in there was that people didn't want to change the nature of the town. Um, you know, we, we heard that again and again. It certainly isn't my my intent either uh, to turn this into uh, a little Boston or, or San Francisco or anything, you know. So um, the intention of this document, I think, is um, to take what generate from the survey monkey platform um, and their analysis tools into something that's a little bit more digestible um, for the average resident, uh, the person that may have missed the survey or may just not be interested in looking at graphs and reading hundred or so um, comments. So, I think ninety-one, I believe, on the last one. That was the one that was more open. Like just what are you hundred and six, I believe. Oh, I thought I counted the last one. I think okay. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, comments of varying length and um like we've alluded to, um the different sentiments portrayed mm -hmm. and perhaps some misconceptions and confusion. But um what I'm hoping for in this document is to, again, make clear the intention of this committee in, in crafting the survey, uh, why it was determined, you know, the survey is the first approach in terms of engaging residents regarding uh, smart growth or 40R. There's a lot of concepts that may be uh, unfamiliar or unknown to folks. Um, so there's, you know, that sentiment to portray. Um, I think it's important to make clear, um, and I really uh, would like to stress what I heard from Mr. Biden, you know, transparency um, you know, really clarifies confusion. So I think if we can make as clear as possible the efforts that the committee and uh, supporting staff in town, Kayla, Alex, you know, folks throughout the community, you know, all the effort that was taken to make the survey accessible and available, uh, and to take back that feedback and those responses in good faith. Uh, you know, trying to articulate that in a short narrative as well. I think this participation section, which I was very quick and superficial in my first draft ago. I think that's where we could possibly spend a little bit of time with the raw data to try to glean any um, layering uh, inconsistencies or any concerns of, you know, someone maybe um, taking the survey repeatedly from household or one device. Um, I think we can also, in the outreach um, narrative, we I can add a phrase or two to speak to why we decided to allow people to, you know, take it as frequently as they need to, and for those households that may just have one device or may have, you know, a variety of opinion to offer, I think that is a pot potentiality as well. Um, but I think, again, just try to be um, as accurate uh, as possible. And when we re reflect the participation numbers, just for the sake of transparency, is 
uh, import. Uh, excuse, how me, Carl. We... Yeah, Carl, excuse me. Yeah, um, Debra. And you may have said it and I may have missed it, but how, <clears throat> how many households were reached through the water bills? Oh, thank you. I didn't put it in here, but I wanted to. Thank you. Um, uh, I'd have to follow up to be exact, but I know that we delivered 1,500 inserts and the collector's office had to print, I believe, 300 more. So How many more? 300. So I believe it's approximately 1,800 yeah. addresses were reached via the water bill. And we have no way of knowing. We have no way of knowing how many adults. No, that would represent right. And, I that, mean. and that doesn't capture everyone because I was at the climate committee meeting uh, last week, and several residents didn't see that because they rent, and so their landlord got the water bill, and they didn't see that. So right. You said that, yeah. Because I, I was thinking, and it's just, I don't know what it's based on, honestly, that maybe it reached 3,000 adults, and which would make it about a 10% return. Um, and I just wondered how we felt about that, in a sense, you know. I don't know if the 3,000 is a good estimate, but... Um, yeah, I don't I mean, know the demographics to say what percentage is two person households and what is one person that we don't know if they're right. absentee landlords that are having their water bill mailed to Connecticut. You know, we just don't know. Um, we, have census. we do have census. Yeah. I will say that um, the, the number of initial prints that we delivered to the collector's office was based off of an estimate that excluded duplicate mailings so um you know there, there should not have been uh households that received multiple announcements they may have received multiple bills but there should have just been one announcement for that address so we can say you know with a bit more accuracy that you know that 1800 addresses were uh, you know, connect with yeah. But yeah, thank you, Deb. I intended to add that detail. I just spaced on it. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it gives it, it gives us a sense of the return. You know, the the level of interest. Which, if you take eighteen hundred, it would be a sixteen percent return rate. If we think more than one person at an address. Is, was likely to respond in in cases, maybe it goes down to ten percent. So, ten to sixteen percent return. I don't know. It, a, it gives a sense of, you know, how, how much participation there there was in a sense. And, and I mean, that's, for, for a big national survey, that would be a fair return. I think for a local issue, it's not great. Well, like for town elections, there's hardly the, the very similar turnout. Yeah. It's not great. <laughs> right. Well, just rough math, Deborah, but if we take the census data and the number of housing units in town, total number of units of housing in town, it's roughly 2.2, 2.3 per house. So mm -hmm. reach 1,800 addresses, there's a rough approximation of how many people. Right. That's just the water bills. There were also senior center, library, what and town hall, right? Weren't those the other places? That's where physical copies were made available. Um, there were only nine physical copies returned. Okay. So, so but you know, so this is really the substantial. Yeah. It, not to say that it, you know it was due to the efforts of the library and the senior center yeah. to get those uh, is just to say that mm -hmm. most of them they've got this home. True, very, very possible. Um, and we do have some, I, 
I think I heard at least one senior that's active in the senior center that isn't a resident, you know, used to be and moved a town or two away, but has friends and so comes here. So, but that question number one would have handled that. What we can do, um, um, uh, using the raw data that I provided to the committee members is, you know, we can isolate those that responded in the negative in the first question, identifying, identifying whether or not they had residency. We can extract those um, from, we could do it from the totals, or we could just put a caveat for the breakdown of the individual questions, which is the intention for the remainder of this. I'm sorry, I didn't get to it. But the remainder of the document will be kind of a, a half page summary of those open-ended questions and the math related to each. We could have, you know, for each one of those questions, I could break out and say, you know, of question two, three respondents were non-residents and their sentiments were X, if that would be helpful. We, we didn't have that. How many non-residents even answered? It wasn't that many, right? There were 12 in total. It's less than 4%. Yeah, it's not a big issue. It didn't, seem, didn't seem like a big issue. No. Yeah. And it really shouldn't be, you know, to be pristine, it, we should be just asking residents. So, true. Sure. Although I suppose I, you know, this, 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 if those 12 were absentee, you know, that own property here, don't live here, and then they right, but I go ahead. Yeah, no, I was picking up on what you're saying, but I think like the whole point of this is to, to start to distill themes. Mm. So, I think four percent of respondents being non residents is not likely to skew those themes dramatically. Mm. Maybe there's one or two off color comments there that might be associated with those groups, but I can't imagine that it's going to be it's going to hurt the, the process. Yeah. So the more the more the more important question I think is what kind of participation did we allow for, mm -hmm. and what kinds you know we struggled with it. We didn't we didn't have perfect solutions for how to reach renters or anything you know other people who weren't going to get the main water bill. I think those are more important questions to, you know, relay and then what the returns were and, you know, who that represents and who it doesn't represent, even though we discussed it and tried our best and, you know, didn't fully accomplish that. Right. So I think there's there's a little bit of more context that I can provide in the outreach section here that gets to that fact because I know we discussed it on multiple occasions prior to making the meet, the survey public, you know, particularly the issue of renters, you know, with our primary outreach strategy being the water bill. Um, so I'll add a, a clause or two there to just elaborate on that. Um, I did I did want to call out again uh, a little bit of gratitude to and acknowledgement to the. Hadley Digital Equity Project um, for uh, kind of cross pollination efforts there. Yes. Um, and I did want to respond, and I, I would ask the chair to invite a vote of the committee. Um, Alex is chair of the Digital Equity Steering Committee. Steering committee. Yeah. Uh, and their consultants have asked for summary documents of your survey responses. I would invite um, the committee to consider that and make a decision at this time. Is anyone aware of a reason why we should not? I thought these were already published for the public anyway. Yeah. So yeah. All, all the responses and all that. Well, not emails, but right. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah in the summary, we'll exclude the emails. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, hearing no objection, I would entertain a motion to share that directly with the Equity Steering 
the Digital Equity Steering Committee. I'll make a motion. Motion. Anyone second that? I'll second. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? Yes. So I would do a roll call vote. Justin? Aye. Aye. Uh, Andrew? Aye. Deborah? Did we lose Deborah? I couldn't hear the previous speaker. And I wonder if someone could just summarize what 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 was said, the comments. Um, that was um, Alex LaMarche. And he was just uh, explaining the benefits of sharing our results with this with the, with the digital equity steering co committee and the fact that they will be happy to share their results with us and we might have said a couple other points okay okay thank the you owl, the owl is sub performing today i'm sorry I'm Our, fine yes i you're voting i and mark down i so I think that's it. We have just the four without Michael and without Randy. So, okay. Motion passes for the record? Yes. For the record. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Alex, I'll get that to you in the morning. Great. Thank you. I just need to tweak that PDF a little bit. Thank you. Got that. Uh, and if you're going to email our consultant. I'll respond with that and that email chain if that's okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, as of right now, I don't have much else to share in the document. And I, again, I apologize. Um, well, just for context, our uh, PDPC got very hectic this last week um, because of a wonderful federal grant opportunity related to housing affordability oh, yeah. that we're uh, responding to urgently. Um, so I'll put in a plug for that uh, on the evening of the 25th. At 6 p.m. and on the, in the morning of the 26th at 10 a.m., uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission will be hosting public meetings regarding our application, our joint application with Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Uh, the two regional planning agencies are applying for uh, a federal grant from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. They have a program called Pro Housing pathways to remove obstacles to affordable housing. Uh, this is their second round of funding. Um, Pioneer Valley is the lead entity applying, so, and we're required as part of that process to make public for 15 calendar days the application and providing public comment. Mm -hmm. Those are the two meetings where we'll preview the application and post it online. Uh, this would be many millions of dollars in funding over five years so that the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and partners would uh, work with all of our member communities to update housing plans, housing production plans, address zoning and land use regulations. Uh, there might even be some seed money for different projects that we're trying to identify at this point. It's pretty exciting. It's, it's kind of a generational opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, this is the second round of funding that this program has offered. There's hopes for a third, but uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has decided to go forward and seek out nearly maximum amount of dollars at this point. Um, so if anyone, I hope any of the committee members or any of the, anyone in the public who's interested in uh, housing production, getting more uh, units 
uh, underway in the Greater Pioneer Valley. Uh, visit the PDPC website for more information, and hopefully we'll see you online. Those both of those meetings will be virtual. And you said that was the, the Wednesday the twenty fifth. When you say six, six o'clock, Wednesday the twenty fifth, then 10, 10 p.m. Excuse me, ten a.m. on Thursday the twenty sixth. Okay. So I guess you're the first to hear that. Okay. Yeah. It's, I don't even think it's on much. I'm gonna put that in my calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sir, yeah, can you just send me an email? Yes. We have a housing and economic development committee meeting on Thursday, and I'll just pass the info on to them. Yeah. I didn't transcribe anything you just said. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's good. Um, there should be a web page on the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission website. Um, it was supposed to be up today, but I didn't see it. So hopefully tomorrow. Um, I see the meetings on there. So did I. It's September 26th, then October 10th. Uh, so, no, uh, September 25th and 26th. Oh, they're both September the 25th. Uh, those ones are on the calendar. Okay, okay. So it hasn't got posted yet. Yeah. Um, so I think um, my question and you know, my my urgent task is to finalize this summary document. Try to um, to use Justin's terms, you know, find the th the themes that are prominent and the unique responses. I think my largest question is. How would the committee uh, advise address acknowledging some of the misconceptions and language that may be irrelevant or unfruitful? Could we do a FAQ? Hmm. I, that's not a bad idea. Question sounds better than you know, attacks or criticisms, you know, how to address. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we want to reply to the specific comments because mm -hmm. some of them, I mean, they're, it's all just the same talking points. Um, but to Mark's point, an FAQ or, or any kind of like fact sheet mm -hmm. could just be as simple as saying, you know, hey, we got these responses and we don't want to ignore them. Here's the, here's the truth of the situation. This is all the data. This is, this is where we get our numbers. Like, We've laid all out like that. Maybe we can just finally say that that argument, while we hear it, is not valid. Right. And I think that that could save time, make it more constructive going forward. At when we have small group meetings or whatever, say, oh, reference that right to you know, here's a handout, here's the FAQs, <laughs> just so. I think if we're doing FAQs, it should be broader than only the ones that we really some of us really dislike you know right. it, it should be more broadly and then one or two of them can address what we're considering more offensive responses but i wouldn't want to see a whole um document just geared toward that because it's not that many people you know not that many people it's some and good to have a response to it but also there's other thing, other issues that are important, and other FAQs that are important. Right. Uh, thank I, you, Deb. I would just say, I would just amend. It's not when you say it's not that many people. It's not that many responses. Right. There not are many many people out there who did do the survey that support that, and I suspect that there are. To Deborah's point, though, there are also a lot of comments in here that are like, I don't know. Yeah, we need to see more. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I don't know what this looks like. What, what right. does this do to our schools? You know, like right. there there are real questions baked right. in here that that could all be part of an FAQ, and just one of them could yeah. be. We got a lot of questions or a lot of responses about migrant populations and undocumented immigrants. Here's what you need to know. And to to that point, there were a number of sorry, kind of keep going off the rails. There were a number of comments about um, on both sides of. The line. There were. Um, I saw several that said our school enrollment is low and we need more enrollment. And then there were others that said we don't want to burden our schools. Our class numbers are right. Blah blah blah. blah. 
Um, I have reached out to Dr. Annie McKenzie, and she has offered to uh, Zoom with me because uh, I, I I sent her an email and I said, uh, "Do you have an elevator speech to address these two? Like, which has more veracity, and or is it as I suspect more complicated?" And she said, "Yeah, let's do." Um, and I think um, you know it may be. Um, I think that we're. This is just what what I think, but I'm not informed terribly on this. I haven't been to a school board meeting or anything, but my sense is that our Hadley enrollment in our schools is low, which has allowed us to do school choice, and that's bringing our numbers up. But if we had more enrollment, it might be better for us to be local. This is what I'm reaching out to find out. Because again, there, there are people that may have heard that and had that opinion, and we could clarify it. Or there could be people that we can say, here are the facts, and it's not going to change your mind. But I'd like to put that out there as well. Good news for you is uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee actually had her come and do that exact thing. Oh, yeah. um, so there's a recording. I don't remember what the date was, but she outlined it all for us. Oh, okay. What you just described is exactly right. Oh. We have a lot more choice students than we need. And if we had more Hadley residents, we actually get more funding for each of those students than we do from the choice students. Oh, good. So our schools are under capacity and would have a higher operating revenue with more local rep representation residents. Sweet. Okay. I didn't just pull that out. No, you, you <laughs> said it exactly the way she did. So I'm right. Okay. Um, I think what I would recommend and what I'm happy to uh, begin uh, advancing in response to some of the misconceptions I'll, uh, mentioned in our responses, but also to question eight, where we specifically asked for regarding you know seven plus topics that residents may want more information about which i think is where we got a lot of responses of well yeah i don't know what this means um you know each one of those topics in its own right could have its uh, you know one page faq with a couple of sources of information about you know just the realities it has and so we could start working that way as well. Um, we on the the Hadley uh, resident members of the committee want. To, does anyone want to draft up? You know, maybe take one or two of these points and draft those up so that we can save his efforts. Uh, for what we originally intended, and then we can bring that back to the group, and you can weigh in it. We can all we'll weigh. I, I'm just trying to be as efficient with our grant funding. Time is money. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we that's and just crowdsource with this group what the themes that we saw were. Yeah. At least we might have some buckets to start putting stuff in. Yeah. Uh, yeah taxes, the big one. Uh, schools like Mark mentioned or any more comments. Uh, students, uh, student, okay. yeah. university students, housing students, students in general. It's a common theme mm -hmm. alongside immigration. I think we could probably put some FAQs too. Mm -hmm. um, I, think was, I was actually surprised. A lot of comments uh, and focused on the pedestrian experience as opposed to bicyclists or cars. Yeah, there were. I I definitely sensed there were there were those that were, boy, it would be you know it would be nice to make it, you know. Some said, why do we need to do any you know when we asked about bike this or legs or whatever, and some people said, why do we need to do that? The state's doing that, but I think adding, I think for those people. Um, you know, I mostly drive, only bike on the weekend, but there are people that 
like for work and school and uh, you know that you can use that that rail trail and being able to get to the the malls and, and having these little uh, spur spurs that come down and having adequate sidewalks or bike lanes um yeah so i think that's another you know that was something that i could see there were two different opinions on it i think it could just Shedding who might not, some may not care. I'm not going to bike. I'm only going to drive. I don't care about bikes. Okay. But that may be something more in the future as maybe the next generation of Hadley residents. And of course, you know, there are areas of Hadley that you can't get to the town easily, you know, to the center, to the spine easily on a bike. So if you're, um, off in those areas, and I can see that's not going to interest them, but there are those that would. And it also, I think the biking also helps uh, out-of-towners get to the businesses that support our tax base. Mm -hmm. So, Deborah, your hand was going up. Yeah, I have a question. It goes back to, you know, even before we did the survey, but it, it's coming back to me now, which is, seems like there are some things that we were discussing in the survey that, I mean, are they things that can really be addressed by, you know, the kind of zoning bylaw changes that we're thinking about? Like, you know, like the amenities or, or the, you know, the shady sidewalks or even the spurs to the bike path. I mean, those aren't necessarily things that a developer is going to come in and do or that, you know, well, maybe those zone. Things, well, those are things that we could write into a zoning article that would say <clears throat> these are desirable. These are things that the town finds desirable that would help your, you know, you can, there are ways to write it into zoning so that they see the more of these you put in, the more likely you're going to get a positive response. From. Okay. So more more like incentives, not. Yeah. Well, yeah. You can you can mandate them if you want. You can. Uh, if there are some cities that find it beneficial to mandate things like tree lovers and tree spacing, just you know, it, it helps you get right across the town. So we we have control. We have the ability to control that. Any other big themes that we saw? So here's a one kind of plus you know, the difference between commercial and residential property. So I think a lot of people don't understand that this market building is all commercial properties that generate significantly more tax revenue than for retail all it does. Um, the sound is very muddled, at least for me on Zoom. Is it muddled for others on Zoom? It's muddled for me too. Okay. Is there anything that can? I hate to miss the comments. Any suggestions, Alex? Yeah. Okay. Oh no. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, this is what I'm getting from. You get to hear the owl over the hoot. It's my least favorite thing. It's a hoot. I don't know why. Oops. <laughs> Are we back? Do you hear us now, Deborah? I see Andrew. Andrew says yes. Yeah. yeah. You okay. and Kyle have been clearer than, um, for example, Justin's comments, at least for me, were quite difficult to hear. Is this any better? Yes. Okay. 
Good. We moved, we moved it about 12 inches closer. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't want to miss that. We made it closer to these guys. Because I don't have much to say. It's still okay. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. So I think we are inviting any other topics for FAQs, and I believe the recommendation was that the committee would divide and uh, divide and conquer. Yeah. Yeah. Divide to address a few of them. Yeah. If not all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could just do some bullet points, and then if we want to flesh them out, there's there's other time. Yeah. Yes. So I think we started. Uh, I think maybe Justin was starting with a list, and we can circle back to it next meeting, unless we want to have a subcommittee that wants to tackle it. But I don't know that there's anyone that has just oodles of time they're trying to find yeah. how to use. It's a fair time, so I think we just circle back at the next meeting. When are we planning to do the second engagement session? Wasn't that October? Um, we had discussed October. Um, at this point, I would advise waiting mm -hmm. to set those dates until we hear from our grant application oh, for additional yeah. funding. Yeah. Um, I think we may be in a bit of a holding pattern until we get word regarding that, uh, at least in terms of what I can really um, Not to say that the steering committee needs to disband or anything. Of course, no. you still have a charge. No. Um, I just may be less present. Sure. Uh -huh. Well, do we want to? Um, so, what is the? Is there a time frame on that grant funding decisions? Or uh, we're hoping by October. Okay. Uh, I can follow up and okay. get back to you, Mark. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, see. Our first meeting is in two weeks. Is it September? 30th? I think it would be because October 1st is the first we were doing the Monday before the before the planning board so the planning board would be which would make us having this and then again in two weeks on the 30th and then the 14th of October will be before the, the planning board 15th that sounds right although the 14th might be I, didn't we already address that? 14th is uh, Columbus Day. The 14th, I believe, is Columbus Indigenous People's Day. Yes, because I will be um, in, in the White Mountains with my daughter. Right. <laughs> we lost Deborah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did we already talk about the scheduled right. meetings? Because I, I feel like we talked about the fact that you know that our October meetings would actually be September thirtieth and October fourteenth. Um, when I say October meetings, those are the ones that correspond to the October planning board, right? Because we precede those. Would anyone be open to making the, these meetings later in the evening? Yeah, I don't. I'm, well, I don't know how that that impacts you, or if it's easier for you. I may be remote. To, but... to be remote, right? Or we could do one a month that's later, and one that's early. You know, we could do a five o'clock and a seven o'clock. So we got a mix of who's in person and who's remote. Just trying to be accommodating. 
I'd rather keep them earlier just to state a preference, but I would tr try to come to the later ones if I can. I mean, how, how late are we talking? Yeah. Is it a half hour or two hours? What would benefit you, Andrew, if there was like 5.30 or 6? Uh, or I mean, like 6 or 6 would work. So that'd be like 6 to 7.30? Or are we trying to do one hour? Yeah. <laughs> Just in my, my work schedule got a little, uh, little yeah. wonky recently, so... Yeah, yeah. Six is fine, Gabby. Yeah, I'm fine with six. Deborah. Yeah, are we talking about sometimes five, sometimes six? Well, uh, we could try a six. Uh, I'm fine doing them all at six, but I'm not cooking dinner for anyone, or I don't have kids or anything, you know. I'm an empty nester now. I really would just prefer consistency. Yeah. My schedule is all over the place and mm -hmm. I, I will miss meetings if they change times. We have in this calendar year, what, probably five more meetings. I don't know that we went into de December or we didn't go far. Uh, we Yeah, I don't think we went if, far. If we even or... did one. Um, yeah, I don't believe so. Uh, so with the 30th of September, that's what our next date is. So are we looking at so that's what it would be? Yeah, is that if we're in a holding pattern, should we just jump to the well, then the 14th doesn't work because that's a holiday. Right. And the seventh doesn't work for me with the other uh, nights. What's wrong with the 30th? Oh, uh, I was I was just saying, do we have a lot to do if we're in a holding pattern about uh additional funding for uh PVPC services? Have we exhausted the original bucket? We're getting close. Mm -hmm. I think um, what I still have available is to wrap up the work that's outstanding, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'd be ready to proceed into the second phase of engagement. We're starting to scope out those sure. agendas and, you know, because we we're imagining, I believe, three folk, um, listening sessions, three separate listening sessions. I think that the FAQs would go a long way and start that work so if the committee is willing to take that up I, that would be helpful to get the next round of engagement going i feel us having a meeting on the 21st of october first would the 21st of october. Yeah, i have that too that would break the whole pattern. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it breaks that call okay um and i don't have one on the 14th or on the 7th so I guess we knew that that was going to be a challenging month. So I would say we're probably not going to have engagement in October since our next meeting is either. I have it there too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, we likely won't do it around the holidays. So that puts it into the new year. Yeah. So, so not the 21st of October? I'm showing the next meeting as the. 30th of September and then jumping three weeks to the 21st of October. Um, if there's no rush, which I don't think there is a rush, other than that your funds were going to end by the end of the calendar year, but your funds are going to run out earlier based on the demand we put on you, um, I'd say we could I would float the idea of just jumping to October 21st because I don't know what we're going to discuss in two weeks. Or we can have a meeting without time and Absolutely. we can work on our FAQs. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to suggest the same. Yeah, because you still have to get the executive summary done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that could be the, the bulk of your focus with the remainder fee. We can figure out, well, at the very least, what the questions are that we want to answer. Okay. We can draft answers but with your help. Right. Make sure. Right. Um, and let's try that on page six and see if that, how everyone feels about that. The 30th at six instead of five. Okay. Does that work for? Yeah. Alley meeting. And then what's the other date? Uh, October 21st is a Monday. October. Which I currently have at five o'clock, but we'll, we could decide that on the 30th if we stick with six or we go back to five or we alternate or whatever, as long as we give tile advance warning. I've, I do have the 21st on my calendar. Yeah. So I'll at make five, sure that, that was right. good. Yeah, I'll shift. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll hold it at five for now. Uh, and in the meantime, I will quickly make a draft for the 30th and share it with Mark and Kayla. And then I'll leave it to the two of you to get it finalized and posted. A draft agenda. Great. That's draft good. Agenda. All right. Yeah. Can I also suggest that we add a, a section on the agenda for public comment just to have a, you know, a, a way to address it in a, in a uniform fashion in the future? We could put it at the beginning, middle, end, wherever, but it just right. will make it uh, easier if we have a section for it. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just do welcome. Public yeah, comment. yeah, we could we could do that as an opening public comment question. Yeah. Okay. The fact that someone showed up, though, I mean, positive. This is yeah. we are trying to reach people. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. reach people. Yes, yeah. good. And Tony's in interested in involvement. We uh, he was almost um, our interim planning board. You know, he was uh, one of our people that we voted on. So engagement, we like engagement. Yeah. All right. Anything else on tonight's? Um, no, I think that everything on the agenda. Um, yeah. The next round of engagement will get discussed in future meetings. Okay. Uh, any other members have anything before I ask someone for a motion to adjourn? Hearing none. I'll make a motion to adjourn. You have yeah, a motion, a second? A second. All right, Andrew, thank you. Uh, without further ado, I would jump without discussion to a vote. Justin? Aye. Aye. Andrew? Aye. Deborah? Aye. Mark, aye. Thank you. Thank you, Have the Media. Thank you, Kyle. And thank you to Tony Biden and anyone else who is listening and invited in the future join us.